Hello, welcome to the next instalment of Let's Play Dead Pixels. Last time we wrapped up the main campaign mode, so today we're going to start delving into the extra modes that were more recently released as free DLC. The first one that we're going to be playing today is called The Solution, and it follows, follows on directly from the main campaign. Uh, if you watched the previous video, you'll remember that we escaped from the city, which is 95% zombies! And then we got kind of cut to a scene at the White House, which uh, faded out. Now we learn what's actually happening there. How the government is responding to this crisis. Because, as we all know, the government in a zombie apocalypse never, ever does the right thing. So here we are. The solution. There's a bit of an intro cutscene of sorts, so I'll shut up and let you watch that for a minute. Okay, so that's the basic story of this mode. And unlike the main campaign mode, we get to choose a character from one of several. There are no traders in this mode, so we can't buy any upgrades. We can't sell anything, so we can't buy upgrades. Um, which means all the characters are already upgraded, as you can see in the bottom left corner there. They all have different... Um, Skills developed to different levels, I should say. And in the top right we get a, a nice little sort of potted biography of their crimes. Armed robber makes sense, fraud not so much. I mean, someone who's been convicted of fraud isn't necessarily the best person to take into a zombie apocalypse. Having said that, he has some good stats. High gun skill, high health. Decent strength and melee, decent speed. So I'm going with him, Mel Brooks. Sentenced for fraud to 15 years. Okay, let's do this. Thank you so much. Yeah, got that already. That means we don't have to bother picking up and flogging teddy bears like we used to. And this mechanic here is the way that we get... <laughs> Oh yeah, ink ribbons. You save using ink ribbons in true Resident Evil 1 fashion. Um, and it's a two-way journey, so unlike the first mode where we just had to get through a number of streets to an escape point, in this mode we have to get there and get back. Which is somewhat reminiscent of the sugar mill mission in Left 4 Dead 2. So, um, it's introduced a couple of the mechanics there. One, as I said, is there are no traders, so you don't have to bother lugging around a load of crap to sell. You're not going to be able to buy upgrades. Again, there aren't any traders. And if you want any extra supplies, you have to either find them or call in an airdrop. And you only have a limited number of 
airdrops, or rather you can only call it in a limited number of times. Look, um, you use US Army Radio for that purpose. You only have four, so you can only call in four airdrops full of supplies. Worse than that, though, is the fact that, as I recall, it takes a couple of streets before they actually drop. So you have to kind of think ahead. You have to... Uh, you can't afford to be in a position where you think, hmm, I need some ammo now. I'd better call in an airdrop. You have to think, hmm, in two streets' time, I might need one. It might not be two streets exactly, but I know it's some streets. No doubt we'll see in due course. Okay, those are probably both useful, so I'll take both of them. This mode is more arcadey than the main campaign, thanks to not being able to... Oh, don't have any ammo for that rifle. That was silly. Um, thanks to not being able to upgrade your characters. So it's sort of toned down the... Oh, piss off! I thought you were dead. So it's toned down the RPG elements that are in the main campaign in favour of um, a more immediate action style. Which mode you prefer comes down to a matter of personal preference. But they are different enough that they're both worth playing. And that's one of the things I like about the extra modes in Dead Pixels. They differ sufficiently from the, from the main campaign and from each other that they do all the modes add something to the game. So, here's Zom.com again. Clearly one that our earlier survivor didn't loot. And as usual, well stocked with weapons. Ugh, spitting guy. Hate them. Get off! Your poor hygiene troubles me. Ugh. And we'll see how this goes, because as I recall, I've never actually got all the way through the solution, even on the easiest setting, which we're on at the moment. It does seem to be significantly harder than the main campaign. Whether it actually just has more enemies or what, I don't know. Um, but it could well be, because you don't have the level of customization and the ability to adapt to your changing circumstances that you have in the main campaign. Uh, flare, not really. Don't want to weigh myself down, because we still have the encumbrance problem that's built into the game's mechanics. So, although we... Uh, hmm... Although we can still pick things up, there's no point picking up anything that's just a valuable or bit of tat, because we're not going to be able to get any money for them, and they will just slow us down. No point picking up duplicate weapons either, for the same reason. So I think at this point, even though I don't desperately need to, I think I'm going to call in an airdrop simply because I want to show off this mechanic while I'm here, and I don't want to forget. So, here we go. Let's, uh, no, I don't want to equip it. Oh well. Use it! The next drop point is one street east. Okay. Wait, what? Ah, okay, we, we choose our stuff. Okay. <laughs> I'm not that familiar with this mode, with it being a much newer introduction than the main campaign. So actually, I'm not going to call it in, but hopefully you see kind of how it works here. You buy as though from a shop, using money, but you can't sell anything, you can't buy upgrades from the airdrop, and it arrives one street away from your current location. So let's cancel that order, don't want to waste it, when I already have enough trouble getting through this part of the game. Into another zom.com, as usual, well armed. Clearly these people were very intent on defending their IT supplies from any possible danger. Uh, starting to get busy. We remember that from the main campaign. Oh, get off me! 
I'm really having a bad time today dodging this spit. <laughs> That's not a sentence I ever expected to say. Let's just run past this lot. No point fighting them if you don't have to. I think uh, a convict who was in prison for fraud is not the best choice for this mission. Not just because it's not a violent crime, so um, he's not exactly a soldier, but also because you don't know what he's been fraudulent about. Maybe he's fraudulent about his ability to use weapons, or his ability to walk, or eat, or... You don't know what he's been lying about. This could be a disaster. He could even have been lying about being in prison for fraud. Ah, The questions, the questions this all raises. It's like Battlestar Galactica in here. Or Dollhouse. Two series worth recommending. For all you me recommendation fans out there. Okay. I think, in this mode, because there aren't any traders and we save using ink ribbons rather than just a saved menu, I think we can save at any time. So, since we're hitting ten minutes now, I will probably get to the end of this street and then call it. Because, as I've said multiple times before, I don't want to end up with mammoth epic videos that you have to spend all day sitting through. Okay. And I think you get the gist of this mode here. I've shown off most of the new mechanics uh, that deviate from the main campaign. And, you know, if, if you'd like, if you'd like me to play through the rest of this mode and see if I can get to the end for once, then say so, either in the comments below or on Twitter, at AlanWithT. Um, but otherwise, I will just leave it for you to play and enjoy this mode if you buy Dead Pixels, which you should, for 80 Microsoft points on Xbox Live Indie Games. So, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time for Last Stand, the final mode of Dead Pixels.